sometimes we look at our tactics and we go it's not working out right but we don't know what to spot in the game to give us a clue on what to fix well on today's episode of game changer that's what i plan to do i've received the save from twitch it comes from Billy. it features a team in the la liga atletico madrid that's coming up next if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the notification button to stay in touch for more videos like this. Okay, so here we have got a save from David Beale, it features Atletico Madrid. There are several things that we want to do and uh, the first thing I want to do is try to understand how this team has been playing. If I look at the results, they've done pretty well against some of the teams, uh, some of the big teams, but against some of the smaller teams like Girona, there's a draw. Then let's ignore Barcelona. Then we look at San Sebastian, there's a defeat. And then we've got another defeat against Athletic Bilbao. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to go into the game and try and understand what's happening here. This is off a set piece. You would took the attacking set piece, but someone under your players couldn't transition effectively back. Here, your um, a defensive set piece doesn't work out very well for you. Okay, this tells me immediately that the first thing I need to do is look at your set pieces. Right? That's all we do. Now, the second thing I could do is I go to a specific point in the game. Uh, to do that, we'll have to just take a look at um, extended highlights and then find a suitable time when this happened. And I actually found one at the 16 minute. So as the, the the ball is played out, this is the op, this is your team, right? So when they're playing this out, this in the, this Oblak plays it to Faro. Faro's a ball playing defender, plays it back to Oblak. They are pressing you high, but you notice one other thing: you're playing play out of defense. You've got this player playing as a central defender on defend duty. Now, when a team is pressing you high up the pitch, you're gonna have a situation which which this develops into. Ake. It's not a ball playing defender. He, you haven't chosen him as a ball playing defender, so they have to play the ball out. Your playmakers are surrounded. Right? They can't really play the ball out to these players, so your options become very limited, right? Unless this pass is played, and then they are able to work the ball out. Now, immediately when I saw this, the first thought in my mind was, you've got two options. One, tell the keeper to pass it to the fullbacks or you can opt to turn Ake into a ball playing defender or a no-nonsense central defender then he just hoofs the ball out instead of trying something um, different with the passing instructions or playing it back or getting your defense into trouble so that was the first thing that I noticed in this which was probably we could do with a change to one of your to your tactic and I looked at their tactic and I went the first thought in my mind was that this tactic is actually pretty decent. There's nothing really off about the tactic. The roles are pretty nice. There's a bit of variety in your attacking patterns. Uh, the fullback is going to do the overlap. You, you've got a pretty secure looking team. The question then becomes, what can we do? The, what, where are the weaknesses of the system? We've already identified one, which is the player of the defense. So my recommendation would be to change this guy to a ball playing defender. Now what I did was, I played the matches. The first very match that I played, I didn't change your tactic. I didn't do anything. I wanted to observe how your team played because I have a sneaky suspicion that your tactic is perfectly okay. And that the changes that we needed to make would have been very focused on understanding the kind of team instructions we're going to be using and our choices in who's going to be playing on the day. And this brings me to my second point. When trying to understand, and this brings me to my second point, most people in the community today are making good tactics. The areas where they seem to be making mistakes in are in choosing the right combination of players. So here we have a typical example of a generic role playing against a hard, with a hard-coded role. Now the generic role is a role that requires some thought when you apply it. Here we have a central midfielder on support without any play instructions. We've got several players who can play in this uh, position, but what we want to understand are the right players and what they bring to the position. So here we got Koki. 
We got another player called Florentino Lewis who can play. We got Saul and Marco Loriente. All these players are pretty decent in this position, including Hector Herrera. Now, for each one of these players, what I recommend people do is understand what their player traits are and then understand what they bring to the role. And to do that, we, all you have to do is go to your individual training, uh, find your player, or you can do it um, in another way. Just click on the player. This is uh, one step too many. So go to Koke and go to his training and development. And you notice his tactical familiarity is pretty decent. Here, another thing you want to do with your team training instructions is to understand that your team is already familiar with the systems already. And all you got to do is make sure that there is enough position role duty training sessions so that your team becomes you know comes up to comes to speed very quickly. The team is already uh, it should they should be able to understand what they're supposed to be doing so you go to your training making sure that your shed your calendar has got the right spread here this is uh i i had to go and change your training right so there's a very easy way of doing this um let's go to your schedule I, i'll just use one very simple training schedule because if you there's a danger that you know we over complicate too much now this is this is a very simple training schedule you can't go wrong with this you got overall outfield, overall outfield, overall outfield. You got match preparation. We can add one match preparation here, and we covered the whole. We we we've covered nearly the whole gamut. So we've done all this. Now the problem with this training session is, it's light. Players are going to complain, which is one of the reasons why I prefer customized sessions. You could make it a bit heavier on Tuesday if you chose to, uh, but you can keep this and keep using it. In, if you are in doubt, you can always increase the individual workloads for players so that they are. They get a heavier uh, overall trading workload. This is easier to manage in the long run. So we save this, and then we go to the calendar, and all we do is we paste this in here. Keeps it simple. Okay, so we've got match practice. That's fine. And then we go to the next day. We can we look at this again. Uh, we can just paste it in here. Sorry, we, all we got to do is copy this or rather all we have to do is come in here, go to our schedule, we'll paste this in here. We've got one nice schedule there. Then we have to worry about this week. So if we come into this week, all we got to do is paste this in here. Now what we want to do is make sure that our loads are, are, are good, right? So we've got overall outfield here. We've got rest here. We're traveling on this day. There's no need to do this. What we can do is we can remove this. Uh, since we have a double week, right? And what we really want to do is make sure our team isn't overworked. So what we want to also do is make sure that we win this game. All we do is we do attacking movement. We do uh, defensive shape. We can do set piece uh, attacking corners. On this day, we come in, we can do a match preview. Here we want to do a match review. Uh, we do a match review from here. Uh, we can put this in here. We can move this here. We change this because we don't want two defensive shapes in the same week. You can do set piece uh, attacking free kicks, set piece attacking corners, um, set piece defending corners, and we can copy this now. So if we see another week where we have a double session, we just paste it in. It makes your training sessions a lot easier if you're the sort of person that doesn't want to spend too much time doing things like this then this is a really easy and simple way of getting them done in you know in the shortest amount of time possible and you focus on the right areas and don't forget when you do this as well you're working a position role in duty now if you wanted to just you know you want to focus on tempo a bit more right because your tempo isn't there yet you can just come in and change one of the outfield ones to possession and change the other one to possession or you can just add one more possession here and this becomes your tempo heavy training routine so this has got passing style and tempo and this should go up plus you you will get your team uh familiar with the system so this does passing style and tempo this does your position role and duty and your team should be fine
the next thing for me was to go play a game and with your tactic and then try and understand what was happening in the game so that I could make just those adjustments. Now, what you guys are going to see next is highlights from a show called In the Hot Seat where I actually played that match. Now, I won't be showing you the whole show because the show is actually one and a half hours long where I explain in detail what was happening in all the transitions which is available to all the good kind folk who are supporting the channel on our Patreon and our Discord got channels what i will do next is i will you know kind of highlight that one and a half hour show into a small little segment that doesn't take up so much time all right team submitting we're submitting the team i have not checked what our opposition tactic is going to be like real hospitalist i have not looked at the team i just want to adapt on the go so they're playing a positive 4231 dm white, which tells me one thing they expect to beat us on our turf. So they're going to come attacking us. Look, no team plays positive 4 2 3 1 if they want to defend, right? So they're going to be very attacking. They're going to come down. David Zappa Costa is actually a very, very good fullback. Um, so we can expect that flank to be very attacking. Coming down the same flank um, where I'm hoping to attack with Lema. So Pulisic is a winger and uh, we're going to have to be looking at our transitions very carefully. We are aware that our right flank is weak. Now we have to be aware that our left flank might get attacked. So the short passing is something we're going to have to pay attention to. Our transition again, looking at Pavard, looking at this player, I want to make sure that this ball, because this will indicate whether our defensive line is okay. Oh, he doesn't play the obvious dangerous ball. They go down the flanks. There's no closing down happening here. There's no closing down happening here, which is fine. We we don't see Lema tracking back, as you can tell. He's an inside forward um, on attack. So he's not really going to be involved. That's where Zappa Costa is very dangerous. All right. We, I, we've seen something. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to come in here to Zappa Costa and tell him to specifically mark track their fullback. Just one change. I'm not making too many changes to your tactic. Right. Um, let's snuff that out. It's a bit of a concern because at the far post, it was too easy for them to win the header. So, we go to your corners. Uh, defending the far post, you've got a fullback. You've got fullbacks here. This is a bit strange. This guy's jumping reach is only eight. He's never gonna get to any ball, right? So you got two players, man. We get man marking. You can set somebody with marking. So we're gonna use him as a man marker. Uh, so we got this guy here. Um, this guy is twelve. I'm gonna take him and put him here. So he be marking the far post. So we've got this guy marking. We've got this guy's uh, heading is terrible. We can use uh, him at the back. Uh, we've got a striker. We'll put him forward. We've got two players marking these positions. This is important. And we've got go back. I'd rather have somebody age of area. Oh, his jumping is very low. This guy's jumping reach is very low. Um... We'll just basically even tell him to man mark. Okay, so we've got three players man marking now. Now, this suggests to me that maybe your free kicks are set similarly. Uh, I'm looking at these. Wide. Again, you've got somebody who's not very good in the air. Which is fine. We'll just, we'll just have to... We just I personally like to put very good defenders. Like, in the air especially... I want somebody marking that space because defenders can be uh, opposition defenders can be told to attack the far post, essentially. All right, so we've done this. Uh, we're not going to use this for Kier. There we go. Now the header is a lot more harder. They can't get the knock on at the near post or the far post. Pulisic out to Loriente, back to Pavard. Brings the ball forward. There's plenty. There's plenty he can do, right? So that's good work. Pulisic with the ball. 
plays it back to our Felix the Traquatista plays it back good cross not too bad not too bad we're playing quite well although we haven't really carved out any chances just yet uh, the opposition have all they've had is uh, set pieces which is the reason why I reacted to that change uh, the set piece quickly these are things that we have to pay attention to in the game right so if you, as you can see here they've got a target man here this is number 22 is another striker so the defenders are actually back Galarza, yeah the two central defenders are actually back so they don't play with uh, throw-ins with uh, their defenders the top the big men are not sent up all right this is one of the reasons why this is happening is because we are playing with a standard line of engagement so what i'm going to do is i'm going to play this i'm going to do this now since they're coming in um and attacking us since we're drawing them in we're not we're, we're taking our time to build up attack so now what i'm going to do is if their attacks fail we're going to hit one over the top very quickly our felix the traquatista gets away we have our, our own corner now i'm going to check your corner <laughs> as it happens all right so i guess i haven't checked your corner okay we've got nobody attacking the far post Okay, we've got Nathan Ake here, and we've got Pharaoh here. So I'm looking at your corner routines. You attack corner routines. You've got far post, a striker coming in. You've got this guy. You, you can't ask him to come back. You can't ask him to attack from the edge of the area or look at the far post, and you can't ask him to do this. So we made changes. The players are looking a lot better. Hopefully, we don't lose this game. There we go. The two, defend, the two strong men are attacking the area. And you have an out. So, one, I noticed as well that you tend to lose more matches with uh, by conceding set-piece goals. That's it. So, I was like, okay, looks like you're conceding set-piece goals. Let's fix this. And we're playing a lot better now. All right. But, you know, we're tweaking the system as we go. We didn't win this game against his palace. We've got another home game coming up very soon. But the bigger match on the horizon was the match against Manchester City. So, this, these two matches would give us a chance for us to fine-tune our system before hosting that club from Manchester. Our next match was going to be against Gaddafi. Unfortunately for us, Koke was injured and Thomas Lema had to go off after the 8th minute. It was a bit disappointing. We could have won this match once again Man City was waiting alright here we go so the next match uh, we are hoping that we get the right kind of result for our Champions League quarter final first leg match against Man City we got Saul Loriente um, Lema is on the bench um, Hector Herrero Hector Herrera is on the bench uh, we've not done any we don't know how City is going to be playing but we're hoping that you know we do the job Nathan Ake plays it short to Benjamin Mendy, the former City boy. Saul looks up, sees Pulisic. Pulisic takes on one player, takes on another. Pulisic gets inside the box and is brought down. It's a penalty to be taken by... Looks like it's going to be half Morata. Imagine my shock when I saw Morata taking the penalty. Loriente or Felix... I was thinking it's going to be our Felix. Gravenberg beats one, beats two, gets away, gets inside the box. And then we have a second penalty. Penalty, come on. I want to change him. We're not, we don't want, we don't want Morata taking penalties. I want our Felix taking penalties. Yeah, we got our Felix taking a penalty. <laughs> we won nil up. He's, our, he's missed one. We don't need him to miss another. His ratings are probably going to drop. I'm willing to take that chance. Screening uh, to Stones, Stones. Okay, our Felix does enough to track. Quetista will track. He is tracking and gives the ball away to Morata. Morata inside the box. Out to our Felix. How Felix Pulisic. Ferrero. Ferrer. Ferro, whatever your name is. I'm so excited. Pulisic holds the ball up. Yes. The Loriente. Loriente look Graven Birch. Morata looks for the shot. Pulisic saw. And it's a second goal for us. Atletico Madrid 2, Man City nil. The split block is beautiful. Executed perfectly. The defensive line is perfect. The split block is perfect. 
It's enough. We have done the deed and we have beaten Man City. So that is a good result. We were fortunate. We played well. We should have beaten them by at least a scoreline, by a bigger scoreline, right? So essentially, I don't think there's too much wrong with your tactic. You don't need to change too much. I would, however, learn how to use certain instructions a bit more effectively, like when do you use pass more direct? When do you go attacking with wide? How do you use hit early crosses and how do you use pass into space? Um, the changes I made to your tactic were minimal because I don't believe that you needed so many changes. Um, one role change here and probably finding the right pairing in midfield which is when people use the CM on uh, support it can be a bit more tricky because you you need to find the right kind of player for this right you, you always have to find the right kind of player for a support duty a support duty is just not to, not a straightforward role uh, it's a generic role but if you use the wrong player for it you can get into a lot of trouble uh, Lema was unfortunately for us I wanted to use Lema in this match uh, we should have, I really wanted to, but you can use Graven Birch on the left flank. Uh, you could also use uh, Florin, uh, sorry, uh, Lema and of course Justin Clivert. Uh, but this is uh, basically the team I would be starting with. Koke when he comes back definitely slots into this position. Florento Lewis can also slot into this position. Koke can also slot into this position. It's your two wider positions that is usually a ch challenge. Pulisic is a very good winger. So, knowing that he is very good uh, going forward, you want to you want to use that as much as possible, which makes this the choice of these two roles critical in every single game that you play. It, it, knowing the combination is very important. And then, um, other than that, um, knowing when to use pass into space and hit early cross. So it's a uh, it, and finally, you know, it was your set pieces and how you're setting up your set pieces that I found to be the most disconcerting. Um, you really want to put these two positions. These are the two most... You, you can design the rest of the tack, uh, corner routines in any way you want, right? It's going to be okay. But chances are, these are the two positions on the pitch that everybody gets wrong because the default set pieces don't have these covered effectively. So I'm hoping that uh, you guys found this uh, useful and uh, you found it, uh, you at least got something out of it. I know I didn't get off to the perfect start with uh, two draws, but we wanted to do things right for our match against uh, Man City. I wish I could play a bit more because this is definitely a very interesting tactic that you've created. And I want to encourage everybody who has a chance to take part in the Game Changer series to send me your saves whenever you feel you could do with some help. And I'll be more than willing to help you guys out after all, we are all part of the same community that's trying to get better at the game. You guys take care. Have a good one. Once again, thank you for all your support. Please stay safe and healthy in your homes. And if you're working already, please stay safe and healthy as you venture out to a new world. You guys take, out, take care and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. Neymar is a libero. Exactly a one job to do in this whole game. Just be a good libero. I hope he's watching this, man. I really hope he's watching this Twitch stream. Neymar, I've turned you into a libero. We want to see you defend more. All right. Get out there. Look at that. He's got 7.4. <laughs> Neymar's got 7.4 <laughs> as a libero. See? Moral of the story. Neymar works as a libero. <laughs>